Well, the competition is called Nick's Home 2021 and is organized by the Neighborhood Design Center in partnership with COSIC and City of Columbus. The competition is really to invite uh, the design professional to come up with a design proposal and ideas to address the affordable housing problem. How do we come up with a structure, a house, that would cost roughly around $170,000? Something that is cost effective, that has to be functional, it probably needs to be flexible and adaptive, and at the same time, it still needs to be comfortable you know, it needs to have a lot of natural lights and, and hopefully will connect to the outdoors and, and nature. One of the structures that we was kind of inspired by is a rural pole barn structure. In a way, it's a barn. So that's why it's easy to build and it's somewhat cost effective. So the pole barn structure, the idea is um, also not having the low bearing wall. So let's say you need your, your room to get bigger. All the low bearing uh, structure is on the outside, you know, on the pole. So you know, the, all the interior walls can be moved. So let's say you need to expand your bedroom or you want to have an office you know, in your house, then you can do that in a more cost effective way. It's like a starter home. So it's designed something for people to buy their first house. And they are normally younger, they have a smaller family, but then the family will grow and they might have older parents that might want to move in at one point. And so, you know, we, we want to create something that is adaptable, that is expandable. So the name is called Felix, Flexible Houses for the Future. So we are really looking at this house to have the flexibility and also the homeowner have the agency to create something that fit their needs. This is kind of showing all different potential variations of the same structure. It can add different things to it to make it bigger or smaller, have a double high space, or you stack you know, the, the two floor together. This is the Felix. It's in here, 800 square foot, and this is what we call the conservatory space. So it is an unconditioned space, so meaning that there's no HVAC in there. But then what we have, it is uh, using the polycarbonate uh, panels on all sides. So it's almost like a greenhouse. If you take out you know, the roof here, we actually have a, a small one bedroom downstairs with the bathroom and then you have the open kitchen, dining and living room on the side looking out to the conservatory, the greenhouse. And then upstairs you have another bedroom basically going up the stairs. Right now we have a double high space, very nice. You can bring in all the light through the conservatory. But imagine that if you need more square footage, then you can you know, add to the mezzanine level, the second floor, you know, to expand it outward. Or some people can choose to you know, enclose a part of the conservatory space. Housing is not just provide a basic shelter you know, to a single person or to a family, but we also want to grow the sense of you know, community. So if you know, this person actually lives in this house, the Phoenix now, when the you know, family grows bigger, you know, then they can expand on you know, the square footage, then they don't have to find another home. So you know, in terms of the community building, it does have you know, that uh, advantage. It's not just moving from one place to another. There are so many new workforce coming into Columbus, right? You know, we are talking about 20,000 a year, you know, something like that. It is a much urgent, you know, kind of problem that we need to address. You know, something like Felix, it can be one of the solutions. It can be a longer, you know, term solution as well. But, you know, Tim and I also, you know, talk a lot about, you know, there are a lot of housing stock in the city, you know, like, um, you know, some abandoned houses, vacant houses, uh, not only residential, but also in commercial building as well. What might be the ways that we can reuse those buildings and convert them into you know, affordable housing? There is no one size fit all solution. You know, we have to solve this problem as a community. I would say affordable housing is a very complex economic yeah. issue. It's not just architectural design issue, but from architect's standpoint, the zoning definitely has a huge impact of how we use the existing land that we have available. But the zoning code itself was written you know, at a different time and it, it, it's normally not a very quickly updated, right? Like it takes a long time to bring them up to date to really address some of the issues. And I think the city is doing that. The city, I, I believe, is actually looking at the zoning code to see if we can do 
uh, to how to increase the density in a more appropriate and balancing way. One of the challenge of the zoning code and also especially in the residential area, the city of Columbus actually has a really good uh, way to deal with multifamily within the residential district compared to a lot of other suburbs in, around Columbus. For example, if you go to Clinville or most of the places that people actually want to live in, we do have a very good mix of single family homes, duplexes and apartments within you know, the same street sometimes, right? And that's a good way to deal with the density issue. One of the biggest hurdles I feel like um, for a lot of neighborhoods to get over increasing density is that they worry about the quiet residential streets with beautiful trees and sidewalk and all of a sudden you have like a 10 story apartment building, right? It, it's just out of scale and it, it kind of, it doesn't fit in the characters of the neighborhood. That's something that zoning can help is that, well, okay, you cannot do a 10 story building, but you can do a four unit apartment. You can do a, a 12 unit apartment if it is the right scale and the right density. And you slowly kind of mix in, you know, with the neighborhood and increase the density, but not changing the neighborhood in, like radically in a very short period of time. And that's give people's time to adapt and, and kind of decentralize that, right? So that it's not like, oh, take down the whole street and then you just build a bunch of apartment and just for the sake of you know, creating the number of units that you need. We need to kind of look at it in a more decentralized way that let different people, whether it's a homeowner, a mom and pop, you know, uh, or a developer to, to come up with their own idea and then see which one actually works better. People talk about housing as an issue, affordable housing. There are a lot of big terms you know, that we hear all the time, but we don't exactly know what it means or you know, what, what's the income level that you know, would be eligible. You know, what I saw on the news is also that you know, our city is really putting money, you know, real money, 200 million you know, in doing the affordable housing. We hear those things in the news, but what I don't know is that well, so exactly how that money are being used, how those resources are being you know, distributed. Is it like five years plan or 10 years plan and things like that? For a general public like me, you know, I, I would love those information to be, you know, to be distributed in a more succinct and clear way. And I think the other part is the neighbor and the community buy-in. Someone has to take the lead to say, okay, Obviously, the high density type of housing development cannot happen anywhere or everywhere. Like you talk about Indianola. Okay, Indianola, we, they kind of put it at the edge of the, of the neighborhood and it kind of created the least amount of impact, let's just say, from a, from a visual and experience standpoint. But the question is that the city needs to communicate that with the neighborhood to say, hey, this is our plan for this neighborhood. This is where the area that we think that we should have high density housing. And these are areas that have also higher, but not as high. So the neighborhood need to understand and have a chance to basically give feedback and have their concern answered by them. So when the actual development comes, when the actual project is being proposed, they're not surprised. They're not shocked by it. They already kind of know. We also have an imbalance problem, meaning that there are neighborhoods that is more desirable when the neighbor is nice, everyone wants to be there. On the service or in news, you will say, oh wow, this, everything is so expensive in that neighborhood. If you go to Short North, like German Village or even like Clinville these days, it's very expensive, but it's not like that everywhere. The city has a lot of other areas that actually is undervalued and they're underdeveloped and nobody really pay attention to it. And even like, even like abandoned home. So I think the city can also take, look at some of those opportunities but you can't do it one at a time. You have to have a more of a, a overall kind of master plan vision. Felix, the idea that we propose here, you know, and then manifested in the design, is truly trying to introduce a new mindset for the future. Meaning that, you know, it started out as a very small square footage, you know, 800 square foot, you know, with two bedroom. You know, a lot of times people feel like, oh, this is just a small space. I don't have any storage space and things like that. Maybe, you know, we are just getting a little older and we're also looking out for, you know, the ne next generation, you know, how much consumption is good enough, right? You know, so it's more like a mindset, you know, to, to present a new perspective to see, well, you know, if we want to do it 
together, you know, well, you know, humanity live for longer, you know, in, in we, we need to consume in a more intentional way. So this is, you know, truly a, a more like a lifestyle, and I won't say change, but at least a shift.